Hi there and welcome to this tutorial for Motion Symphony. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at strafing locomotion. So far I've only really shown follow your nose type locomotion where the character turns in the direction that you want to move, but in a lot of games strafing is used uh, with the character always facing the direction that the camera is is showing. So let's have a look at how we can do this and I'm going to do this in steps and we're going to try and see if we can resolve the problems that occur when we do this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to our character blueprint and on the trajectory generator we want to change the mode of the trajectory generator. So by default it's in standard and this is where the arrows of the trajectory, the facing angles, point in the direction that it's moving. Now, if we put, put it to strafe mode, this allows us to actually set a specific strafe direction. So now that that's in strafe mode, let's have a quick look at um, what the trajectory looks like. We can see here now that the trajectory, the, the arrows are facing in the direction of the camera. And if I move the camera, it goes with them. So to do this, we need to do some other things. So we have our, we have to actually set on our trajectory generator, set the uh, strafe direction manually. So we can either do that like this by taking our trajectory generator and saying set strafe direction. And we can set the variable directly. However, there is a utility function that allows us to set it based on our current camera. And that is set strafe direction from camera. So you want to set that up as well. Okay, so now that we have that working, let's go and make our motion data. So I'm just going to put it in this tutorial folder here and I will create a new motion data. So I'll call this motion uh, tutorial motion data strafe. Actually, I have one already, so I'm going to delete the old one. And we're also going to need a ca tutorial calibration. Again, I'll delete the old one that I had there and um, call that tutorial calibration strafe. Now, the reason we need a different uh, calibration is because there's different things that are important and different weightings that we want to use for strafing that we might not use for the default. So it's good to separate them out. So we can use the same motion config. In fact, it's probably ideal to use the same motion config, same amount of bones, same amount of trajectory points. And I'm going to leave it default just for now, and we'll come back and change it if we have an issue. Okay, so we'll open that up, and I'll just quickly set my motion config. And let's just quickly close that and reopen it to get our character. All right, cool. Um, we'll set our calibration. So this is all just normal setup but we're just using strafe instead and we'll pick the animations. So there's some animations in the example uh, project that you can use for this. I wouldn't say these are comprehensive. I wouldn't say they are necessarily the right way to do strafing. However, I did make these animations for a, a particular purpose and that was to test things like hip twisting with strafing. You might choose to do it differently. That's fine. So I think all of these ones, I won't grab the walk runs because I'm just going to do running for now. So we could add those later. And that's also a walk one there. And I'll add those in. Now there are actually a few missing animations here and I'll show you which what they are. So here we have a circle animation and the character is always facing in this direction. So yeah, no matter where he, he is in the circle, always facing that way. Now, the ones that I'm missing from this animation set are similar, but instead of facing always in one direction, it's always facing outwards from the circle and another one always facing inwards in the circle. And this helps when we actually want to change the axis that we're strafing on. Uh, if, say, we turn the camera or something like that. Um, but we'll just do without those for now. We'll still get the, the general idea of how to set everything up. Now, a lot of these don't require too much uh, do not use tagging. So this is actually a walk set so i'll actually get rid of that there is this one here so i will do some do not use tagging right now and i'll fast forward it just so we don't have any of these teleports and, and redundant information but a lot of these are simply just back and forward strafing at different angles ideally what you would have is you'd have a nice cleaned up loop at you know north south east west and also the uh, 45 degree angles as well and that will also help a lot with your animations i will add in one more though the cycle just the forward running cycle and 
just like that just like we did with the normal one all right so i'm going to do some tagging and i will resume the video once i have finished tagging these up okay so i've pretty much done tagging nothing uh particularly cra crazy just getting rid of the axel and decel on this loop because i'm only interested in the middle part and on this one getting rid of teleports and just idles so for example here we, we get rid of the idle no point keeping the idle there and and that teleport now a little tip uh, for doing do not use poses when you've got things like teleports in your animation if you pre-process the data just with optimization off of course you can see the trajectory and um, you basically want to so you can see this teleport from here to here uh, you want to make sure that if there's any trajectory that's on that teleport like it is now you want it to uh, you'd want to do not use that whole section until it's completely off that teleport Another thing that I often do is, uh, you know, people generally take a little while to accelerate and you're going to have future trajectory in a second where the character is literally standing still, but the trajectory is starting to move. Now, this can cause your character to literally be standing still when the player presses input. So I like to actually do not use up until the point where the character actually starts to move. Uh, and I don't mean a little bit, I mean like like proper you can see the characters moved a tiny bit there but now where that foot is moving it's really starting to move there um it's just going to give slightly better responsiveness and we can always do with more responsiveness with motion matching so there we have that all tagged up i'll pre-process i won't optimize for now i'm going to leave all the settings the same we might enable mirroring later but um not not for the starting point i'll just save that and we can just go into our character animation blueprint. This is the one in the example project. Um, keep in mind the example project uh, might be different depending on when you're downloading it because I do plan to update it uh, you know, over time to be more comprehensive. So here's our running uh, state. And just for the sake of testing and getting this working, I'm, I'm not gonna make another state, right? I'm just gonna put it in here. Um, so let's create a motion matching node and we'll plug it in. And we can bind it with the same trajectory because remember we use the same motion config, which you really should. Um, so we can use the exact same trajectory. Uh, so let me find the settings here. Um, we don't need traits because we're not using traits for the strafing just yet. We might add that later. So I'll bind the trajectory to the desired trajectory or you can plug it in. And let's choose our motion data. So it's tutorial motion data strafe. Oh, that was the one strafe and then our user calibration which was m calibration underscore strafe now there might be some issues we haven't changed the calibration but let's first test this out and see how just see how it goes and we'll try and resolve some issues so i'll hit play and you can see here we're we're getting animation that is strafing um, but it's not quite right so for one the problem is that I don't have a whole bunch of strafing angles and in my source mocap data I've actually not very uh, accurate at running completely at left angles or anything like that so you can see it's quite off a fair bit so we need to use some procedural uh, rotation to fix that or just to clean up the animations it's really up to you how you do it in your project uh, I for one am a solo developer I don't have time to uh, go and clean up everything but um, I will show you how that is uh, we can use a little bit of procedural rotation i think the calibration does need a little bit of work but it's working for the most part which is which is good okay so let's go to our character and we're going to use our trajectory error warping now to be a bit different and we're going to use it now to try and instead of line up the character's direction with where they're going we want to line up the direction that they're facing so let's use this and we're going to set the warp rate to 180 so it's just going to warp much faster and we're going to set the error activation range the max range i'm going to set that to um, uh, 180 as well because we always want the character to be facing the way that they're turning now remember i said i was missing some animations that allow the character to actually turn on that strafe and change the axis of strafing or their plane of strafing um, but we don't have animations. I don't have any anima animations for that. So I'm going to use the error warping uh, component to effectively do that for us. I'm just going to increase this to one and this should be fine. Let's hit play and see what happens. Okay. I've forgotten to do one thing. I need to change the mode from standard to strafe. So the trajectory error warping can be in standard and strafe mode as well. 
Um, so what I highly recommend is you create a function in the begin strafe and end strafe, and it will switch your trajectory generator and switch your settings in your um, error warping at runtime. Uh, instead of putting it all in like the logic here, just have function begin strafe end strafe easy. Okay, so and then you just call that based on the inputs. So let's have a look at this now. Yeah, so that's a little bit better. It's not running way off. It's being rotated. As I rotate the uh, camera, it's procedurally rotating the character. Now, obviously, when I do that quite hard, it, there's some little issues like that. And that's caused by not having those animations that I was talking about before, because we can't sort of circle around facing that angle, if you know what I mean. So we're missing some animations here that we need. Let's try and improve it now a little bit with calibration. So I'm going to go to tutorial and my calibration, and I'm going to just reduce the weight of the um, the facing angle. I'm also going to turn off weight angular momentum. Now, you might not want to do this because in your animation set, you might have uh, animations that turn, like I said, the ones that go around the circle facing outwards and inwards. But in my case, all the animations are facing the one direction the whole time. So there's no point having angular momentum. So I'm just going to eliminate that. I'm going to add in a little bit more, uh, just normal momentum, uh, just so we can get some weightiness and I might pump up the trajectory points a fair bit. Let's see how this works at doubling it. Uh, this might not look good at all. Part of what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to increase the responsiveness as well. This looks a little bit better. Um, so that weightiness, that momentum has actually improved. So let's see how this goes. If I do this backwards running, there we go. Let's try and test if we can see if we can get this sort of circle strafing and hip twisting. Yeah, that's a bit, it's getting there. I'd say the trajectory is a bit long uh, when it's going in circles. And that can be partially just the fault of my uh, recorded animations. As again, again, I haven't cleaned them up or anything, but that's working for the most part. We should be able to go on different angles and plant on different angles. Yep, that's all working pretty well. Okay. So as I said, I made this animation set to try and get this hip twisting working. And yeah, you might not want to do it. I think a lot of games would probably prefer a, you know, walking backwards sort of instead of like turning the body and twisting the head um it's really up to what you want to do i'd say that would probably be easier to capture because with this hip twisting there's a lot of different you know ways the body could twist we could add in some mirroring so let's add in a mirroring profile just to get a bit of extra um coverage so i'm going to add the mirroring profile it's still the mannequin so i'm going to use the same mirroring profile and we'll pre-process we should have double the amount of poses. I'm not doing optimization here. Uh, there's no point. You can watch the optimization video. Uh, it's just, yeah. So now we should have more accurate left and right sort of uh, animations. If we want it to be more responsive, we can do a few things. So uh, with strafing, you generally do want a, a lot more responsiveness. So let's do, let's go to our character first and let's go to the trajectory generator. And what we can do is we can change these move response and turn response. Um, to be honest, they're actually quite high already, so I'm probably not going to change them um, after looking at it. I might make this 380 or something, the, the max speed, though it's probably more a case that the animations need to be cleaned up. Okay, and I'm going to change the calibration. Let's see what it happens if we reduce this to one, and let's pump up the trajectory response weighting to about 0 0.6. I'm just experimenting here. Calibration is a bit of a dark art. There's no right or wrong. But we should get more responsiveness. I think that turn is a lot faster now. Um, you do lose quality, of course. But that's the trade-off you have. You can't have realism if you want perfect responsiveness. You've got to trade off at some point and find the balance that you want. Okay, so that's pretty much good. Um, what else can we do for responsiveness? Now, I think every, I've done everything I can on the actual character here on the motion matching node. We could reduce the blend time and we could have a higher update frequency 0.033. Give that a shot. Uh, one thing that I do like to do whenever there's some procedural motion. So with rotating the character here, 
or if you're not using root motion at all, you probably want to change the past trajectory mode to copy from current pose. And the reason for this is that the actual history is only really uh, relevant if it's from the root motion because um, it has to match the data. If it doesn't match the data, then it's kind of useless. So let's chuck that on and see what happens. So that's working pretty well. It should get better results when we do this procedural turns because that past trajectory is being copied. And it's a little bit better. I still think this animation set could use some more loops. But yeah, there we go. There we have it. Uh, I think I've gone off, um, gone over pretty much everything you need to get going with strafes. It's just a matter of changing the calibrations and playing around with the settings and also getting the right animation set. Uh, I would personally like to improve this animation set. I don't think it's uh, perfect, but then again, it is only here for uh, an example. Okay, I think that just about does it for strafing. You should be able to use uh, do strafing with your own systems and own animations now. Uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.